Now, if I'm gonna make a video that's gonna bring all the butt cheeks into the comment section to blast me, this one's probably gonna be it. I want to take a look at the game World War 3. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, back in October of 2018, a small Polish studio released a game called World War 3 into early access on the PC. Now, because of the similarities, this game was deemed the Battlefield Killer, a modern shooter with many of the mechanics of the classic Battlefield 3 and 4. It was recently taken off the Steam store, so you can't purchase it right now. However, if you've already purchased it, you're still able to play it. Now, with this, I wanted to address the question, did it fail? Go to any World War III video with more than, I don't know, maybe 5,000 views and scroll down and take a look at the comments. You'll see comments like dead game, money grab. Mostly these comments are from people who get their rocks off at being trolls on the internet just because it gives them a sense of, I don't know, superiority and degrading people and things and not all, but most. Anyways, I wanna go over the history of this game up to its current state and I wanna answer the question of did it fail? Let's start at the beginning, back at the initial hype. Now the developers of DICE decided that after their World War I shooter, which was actually a pretty big hit, they wanted to follow it up with a World War II shooter. Now a questionable decision in itself, there hadn't been a modern shooter released in several years. Call of Duty had recently also released a World War II shooter and then they transitioned to a more futuristic style of game with a new Black Ops. So for several years, no new modern shooter was released. And people were wanting this. People wanted to feel like a 2018 soldier in a 2018 conflict with 2018 gear. This is what the staff over at Farm 51 were creating. Now, even before the announcement of the new Battlefield, this game was already in production. So the studio knew what people were wanting, and this put them in a good position for the upcoming release. Shortly after the announcement trailer release of World War III, EA decided they wanted to give this indie studio a little gift. While responding to the criticism of their Battlefield 5 trailer, which was certainly uh, interesting. One of the bigwigs over at EA decided to tell those capital G gamers to shove it by telling them, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Bold move, Cotton. Anyways, this somewhat riled up the audience. People responded to that big middle finger with their own middle finger. That's how polite society works, apparently. This prompted these players to search for an alternative. Enter World War III. As the time neared for the early access release, Big tubers that were known for their Battlefield content like Jack Frags and Level Cap Gaming covered the game with some closed testing gameplay and people were stoked. Maybe <laughs> a little bit too stoked. Fast forward several months to the October 2018 release. The only modern shooter in years failed to have modern servers that could handle the number of players attempting to play. Now from what I can tell, over 11,000 players attempted to play this game at launch. And many of those 11,000 players like almost all, were unable to get onto the servers. Endless loading screens prompted many to just give up, which does make me think, if everything worked appropriately on day one, that would probably be even more than 11,000 people at one time. But that's neither here nor there. Now, after several fixes, people soon were able to get on and play. Kind of. The game was a buggy mess. Obviously, if you understand the nature of early access games, this doesn't really come as a shock to you. Many people do not, in fact, understand the nature of early access games, and once they've got that bitter taste in their mouths, they never want to return. Even with the most apologetic responses from the devs, the game dropped from 11,000 peak players on its October 2018 launch to 3,000 players in November, and then down to 800 players in December. More patches with more bugs, more infinite loading screens brought the game down, 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 and further down. By April 2019, just six months after the initial release, the game was down to 176 peak players, with 66 players playing on average. A big oof. This began somewhat of a vicious cycle of production for the game. The game would be updated with some major features, people would come back into the game for like two weeks to try it out, they'd get frustrated with the bugs or bored at the lack of content, and then the numbers would drop again. Then another update, two more weeks of players, then they would drop again. And when I say drop, I don't mean just dwindle a little. I mean down to where you can only play on one server. And that doesn't mean the server is full. This happened numerous times. 0.4 update, 0.5 update, 0.6, 0.7, until the final update received that was 0.8. I believe the current build is 0.8.7. The studio teased the upcoming movement system in December of 2019 and released the 0.8.7 update in April of 2020. Between that time, there was very little communication from the devs. They pretty much disappeared from the Discord. Weekly reports stopped coming. No new information was given. 
Now everyone was hyped about these new movements, but nothing was being released. No information on the development of these, no expected release dates, no early build tests, nothing. Nada. Zilch. The player numbers continued to dwindle. Is the game dead? Did the devs just take the money and run? Has the game officially failed? And this is where an understanding of early access is very important, because the answer is no. It didn't fail. In fact, World War III just exceeded expectations with its success. See, the point of early access is to gather a player base and gather further funding to further develop and release a full game. Unfortunately, with the way this development was progressing, it's likely the same cycle would persist and the final release of the game would be as lackluster as the latest patch drop. This is not sustainable. So on April 28th, 2020, World War III announced not that they had failed their early access goal, but flat out won early access. This day, they announced a partnership with My.Games as their publisher. Ever heard of the game Warface? It's probably not one of your most played games, but it is an incredibly popular free game that rakes in a ton of cash. A lot of cash that can be reinvested into the company. A lot of cash that the chiefs over at My.Games decided they wanted to throw at World War III and partner together. And really, this cash replaces the need for continued sales during the early access period, which couldn't have honestly been all that much anyway. This partnership completes the early access financial needs. It provides more quality assurance testing with people paid to report bugs and issues, and not just players getting angry and quitting the game without any feedback. It allows for further implementation of a new monetization strategy, which most My.Games inventory is free to play anyway, so chances are pretty high that this is going to be the same structure. This allows the staff at Farm 51 to be relieved of the pressure of funding and allow for the creation of the game. It allows for more cash to be thrown at marketing when the game is ready for full release. A quick overview of the partnership according to this Polish article that I'll link below. You'll have to translate it from Polishese, I think, but Google did a good enough job, so you'll get the gist. First, the team got an upfront payment. This isn't a partnership where they await the release and then get the funds upon the sales. That right there is huge. Next, the farm gets to keep creative control. No anime skins, for the love of Pavel. Please. After that, the farm has access into the marketing and monetization insights used by My.Games, as well as more funding for that. And this means the release of the game will just be the start of a continuous support of extra content coming through various DLCs and microtransactions, maybe even some sort of battle pass. And then finally, and most importantly, this game will be run on the My.Games servers. This can't be stressed enough. My.Games is no stranger to hosting huge player bases, with Warface being on nearly every platform imaginable and hosting millions of players, this likely means that the server issues that have plagued these previously rented servers will be non-existent. All right, all that being said, if that's not not failing, I don't know what you'd call it. The goal of early access is to fund your game and now the game is fully funded and beyond. Now this has rubbed people the wrong way because they invested 20 to $30 into this game, expecting to only play with people who have purchased the game as well. So there is a lot of anger there. That's something that I, don't exactly understand. But I think if you take a step back, just take a deep breath, pull the stick out from being wedged somewhere into your posterior side and realize you wouldn't be able to play the game without this partnership. Then you'd be a little bit happier. Not to mention, while money is tight, I think that the 20 to $30 that you spent two years ago on a game instead of buying a case of beer and Doritos is probably a better return on investment anyway. Your blood vessels thank you. All right, all that being said, the game comes out in what we think is 2021 here. It's likely gonna be free to play, so the life cycle of this game is probably gonna be extended because of this publishing deal, because it's gonna get support afterwards, like I said. And also just take a look at Warface. I mean, that's been that's been out forever, and it still has a big player base. You can hop on and play a game, and it's on multiple ports, so hopefully this game will come to consoles. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below on whether or not you approve of this, whether you disprove. Be respectful if you can. If you can't, probably grow up a little bit. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.